Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Uh, we're making chicken scarpariello. This is a, um, chicken scarpariello is a uh, Italian-American dish, like, popular in the 80s. Um, supposedly from Sicily uh, and Calabria, maybe, maybe that's where the origin is from. Um, but most likely it's just purely an Italian-American thing. Um, it combines chicken with, um, Italian sausage. Pickled peppers, as well as fresh peppers. Um, and then recipes vary. Some of them call for lemon and parsley. Um, most of them call for white wine. I'm doing white wine, um, onions, peppers, and uh, some pickled cherry peppers and the, and the juice from the pickled cherry peppers. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sear off some chicken breasts. Um, <clears throat> let me get this camera started. This is in a, uh, this is what, like a four quart, maybe three and a half quart saute pan, straight sided saute pan. This is the kind of pan you want to use. Something that uh, is going to be, that can hold a good volume of stuff, um, has a nice flat surface for searing, and can go into the oven, oven sitting. Uh, chicken thighs is what we're using. You want to use chicken thighs or chicken leg quarters or mix of thighs and drumsticks here, bone in, skin on, uh, to help keep them, keep them moist. But this is, this is a braising dish, so it's not really something you'd want to do with um, chicken breast, which can come out a little dry when you do it in applications like this. The, uh, the technique I'm going to use here is one that I use very frequently when I'm braising chicken. Um, it's basically, it, it's the way I would, it, what it does is it allows you to um, braise the chicken while uh, also delivering crispy skin, so nice um, tender chicken with with crispy skin is the goal here. Um, it's a combination method on the stovetop and in the oven. You can use this for, there, there's a few different recipes for this in my book actually, um, and on SeriousEats.com. Um, you can, you can do all kinds of different flavor combinations. So you can, you can do say chicken with cabbage and bacon. You can do chicken with like a tomato sauce with, um, olives. And really, any any anything that goes well with chicken, um, and goes well in a braising dish, uh, you can do here. Braising, by the way, is a is a is a sort of hybrid method where you start by searing things and then you finish by slow cooking them with liquid. Um, so we're gonna sear this first, skin side down. Um, I preheated that oil over high heat until it was shimmering, but not kind of smoking. And we're gonna put this chicken in. Now we're just gonna, skin side down, we're just gonna let it sit there, cook a little bit without really moving it. Um, I'm gonna reduce the heat to about medium high. We're gonna cook it without moving it. Um, chicken skin is one of those things where um, if you try and move it too soon, it'll tear up. But when it's ready to be moved, when it's, when it's seared enough and when it's nice and brown, it should lift out of the pan quite easily. So, you know, the real trick with chicken, um, and, and with many other sort of delicate things that you're searing, is let it tell you when it's ready to go. If, it, if it's sticking too much, um, that means that it needs to go a little bit longer. The less you, the less you futz with it, the better. Um, so I'm getting a little bit of sage here. Fresh sage. You don't have to use sage. You could use, you could use something like uh, parsley. Oh, you know what else I'm gonna use is a little bit of um, thyme because, uh, we were biking home from school today, and my daughter says, Papa, when we get home, I want to clip some time, and I want you to put it in dinner. And so, when, when a three-year-old tells you that, the answer is always yes. Um, so yes, I am putting time in this dish, even though it doesn't always have it. I don't think it's going to make it taste bad. In fact, I think it'll probably make it taste good. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to throw in some most of those things whole, and I'll pick out the stocks. Pick out the stocks after. So fresh sage, fresh thyme, sage. I'm going to give a rough chop because that's going to stay in the dish. Um, thyme. When you're braising dishes with thyme, um, usually the easiest way to do it is just throw the whole sprigs in. Um, you'll get flavor out of them, some of the leaves might fall off, and then at the end you can just pull out the, uh, sort of the twiggy central stems and whatever else comes with them, because that's going to be the stuff that's too tough to eat anyway. Um, otherwise you don't really have to worry too much about it. This is my time. Out there, that's Alicia's time out there. In here, this is, this is my time in here. Um, peppers. 
Oops, hold on a second, my daughter's calling me. Give me a second, I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. Um, oh, all right, let's check our chicken. Um, so I've been gone for a few minutes, and our chicken is starting to get, oh, too dark. That's what happens when you're, uh, when you, when your internet goes down and your kid is um, trying to watch a movie. Um, but that's all right, it'll still taste fine. Here, what we can do is we'll, uh, we'll do a little scrape job here. That's the policy of the show, no, no edits and no cuts. Let me reduce the heat down a little bit. Okay, so we got our pepper going. This is my, the way I like to cut my peppers, I find it's the sort of easiest way to do it. You kind of fillet them down, and then you end up with these, you, you get the ribs and the seeds here. You can just toss that, or, or compost it. Oops. Do the same here. Um, you can do a mix of peppers. Um, I think the recipe I wrote for Serious Seeds calls for just a, uh, a red bell pepper, but I'm doing red and green because I had this kind of older green pepper going on right there. And you want to cut it into sort of, not super thin strips, just kind of chunky strips like that. You could also dice it if you want. Okay. All right. So, peppers, onions, sage, today we're doing thyme, um, and then the other sort of key ingredient here, I think I'm going to do half an onion for this, so we got a lot of other vegetables going on. The other key ingredient is these uh, pickled cherry peppers. Um, you can do sweet or hot, I'm doing sweet just because my daughter has been on a sort of anti-spicy food kick recently. Um, and I like to honor her food requests. So today we're doing not too spicy. Hopefully she'll grow out of that. All right. So, once our chicken is seared off, we pull it out. Um, these tongs, by the way, are also Early wood, um, the same company that makes like those. Well, a lot of my a lot of my beautiful wooden utensils come from a company called Early Wood. Um, they're out of based out of Billings, Montana. Um, they don't sponsor me. I pay for everything I get from them. Um, I just I just like their stuff a lot. All right, onions and peppers. We're gonna saute these down, and so you'll notice that as you you know when you when you sear things, you end up with these little bits on the bottom of the pan, you know, these little brown bits, especially when you're doing it in like a, a stainless steel pan like this, or a, um, you know, you won't see that so much in carbon steel or cast iron, but in a stainless steel pan like this, or in a copper pan that's lined, you'll see those brown bits. Um, that's called fond, fond in French, um, and it is, um, basically it's like proteins that have been exuded from the, uh, from the meat or from the skin of the chicken that then um, undergo very intense Maillard browning. Um, Maillard, the Maillard reaction being that sort of cascade of chemical reactions that uh, occurs when you heat up proteins and uh, carbohydrates together. Um, it's what, you know, it's what makes your steak taste so good. At least, hopefully, what makes your steak taste so good. All right, what are the last things we need to do? Oh, we got this Italian sausage. We're gonna brown that in there afterwards. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna throw that in there right now. I think in the recipe, original recipe I have, you probably brown the sausage and the stuff before you add all the vegetables. Um, it's not that big a deal because, um, well, sausage already has a lot of flavor built into it. You don't really need to give it a good hard sear the way you do with um, the chicken, especially the chicken, because you want that crispy chicken skin, whereas the sausage is definitely not going to end up crispy, per se.
All right, I got six cloves of garlic here. I'm gonna cut off the bottoms. Hope all of you out there are keeping healthy, by the way. Um, I've had some friends who've been sick recently. Um, th oops, thankfully, thankfully nobody with the virus, um, with, you know, the virus, I don't think I'm allowed to mention it. Do they still demonetize YouTube channels for mentioning it? I don't know. Um, not with the virus. Um, we've had a couple scares with um, employees at the restaurant coming down with some symptoms, um, but uh, our policy is as soon as, you, as soon as you show a symptom, you go and get tested immediately, and you don't work until those test results come back, and so far, um, everybody's results have come back negative, which I think is, which is great. Um, I myself got tested last week, um, not because I was showing symptoms, but because I strongly believe in the value of testing and knowing. I believe that the more information you have, the better you're able to react to situations and the better you're able to plan for things. Um, unlike certain, unlike certain presidents we have who believe that, <laughs> that, that, that if the news is bad, you should just ignore it. Um, anyhow, yes, I got tested and I was safe. Um, if you live in San Mateo County, um, you should go check out Project Baseline, um, free testing. Um, it's really not uncomfortable at all. Mine was a drive-through test. I, I basically, I drove, I waited for about 10 minutes. Um, they pass you a little kit through the window. They give you instructions on how you do it. You give it to yourself. Basically, it's a little, it's a little swab you stick up your nose. Um, you know, a little uncomfortable, but nothing, nothing too bad. Um, and uh, and then you hand it to them in a in a sealed plastic bag, and then in a few days, you get your results. Um, and you know, it gives you good peace of mind. It lets you plan. It gives you a good plan of action as to how you're going to continue interacting with people and being safe. Uh, I, I strongly suggest everyone who lives in San Mateo do it. Um, and you know, and obviously check if you if you don't live here. Check your local, check your local jurisdiction and see if uh, see if they offer some kind of testing for you. All right, so garlic peel, smash, 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 and smash. I'm recording this today, by the way. It's just smashing the garlic just reminded me of um, Anthony Bourdain's book, um, in which he talks about how you know, it's a, he says it's a thin to, sin to use a garlic press, which I, I vehemently disagree with. You can use a garlic press if you want, but Anthony Bourdain was sort of the guy who um, really got me interested in cooking in restaurants in the first place. Um, and today it's, uh, I'm recording this on the day of his birthday. Um, I only ever got to meet him once in real life, and it was at like a, I think it was, a, it was at an event. I don't remember what the event was for. All I, all I remember is that Questlove was serving fried chicken, and Anthony Bourdain was there. Um, uh, he, he was quite shy, but um, you know, which is not the impression you would get from his books, but um, he was quite shy, I remember. Um, anyhow, a good man. So we unfortunately lost. All right, so <clears throat> I'm gonna take the sausage out so I can slice it up. I always like to get a little secondary board um, when I'm working with something that is potentially raw or, you know, like the inside of the sausage is still gonna be raw. So um, I, I get a second board out just so that I don't contaminate that first board. Um, so you get your sausage browned, cut into a few chunks. Um, by the way, the ratio of sausage to chicken in this, um, you can do really whatever you want. It depend, depends how much you like sausage. Um, I'm doing two of these sausages for uh, four chicken thighs. Um, I think my original recipe called for like a pound and a half of chicken to one pound of sausage or something. I can't, I can't remember exactly. Um, 
But uh, it, the sausage is, I, I, for me, it's mainly there for flavor. Um, some people, when they make this dish, though, they like it to be really sort of sausage centric, and that's that's fine too. If you want the sausage to be, you know, to play like a sort of much more significant role, that's fine. Um, and then finally, let's get some of these cherry peppers out. You can buy these cherry peppers um, whole like this, or sometimes, if you're lucky, you find them pre-sliced, um, which I find to be way more convenient. Um, and you know, for the type, this type of dish, which is a, um, you know, like a one pot, you know, it takes a little time, but it's not really too much work, and, and most of the time is hands off. Um, a dish like this, like a Tuesday night dish, um, I'm all about convenience. So if you don't have to cut these peppers yourself, all the better, I say. These are the same cherry peppers that we use to make um, the uh, cherry pepper relish that we serve in my restaurant, um, which you can get on top of your burger. It's uh, cherry pepper and, sm and uh, basically a cherry pepper and bacon relish, um, although we use the hot, the hot version of these peppers. All right, give a rough chop on those. Very rough, and these are the sweet ones. All right, so our onions and peppers are cooked down. Add my, my garlic, my sage and my thyme. I'm just gonna cook that very gently until, uh, until it smells a little fragrant, you know, like maybe 15 to 30 seconds. You don't wanna burn that garlic. All right, my cherry peppers are going in. And I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of the liquid from the cherry peppers. And finally, about a cup, a cup or so of a dry white wine. I said finally, but I didn't mean finally. Um, we're also going to add some chicken stock. Um, I don't have any chicken stock on me, so I'm going to use a... Uh, I'm going to use some better than bouillon. Someone's at the door. Let me get this going, and then I'll go check the door. Better than bouillon and water. Instead of stock. Come on! All right, so now when that's done, our sausage goes back in. Stir it up. And our chicken. Now the key with the chicken is you wanna kinda nestle it in there, but leave the skin out. Okay, and then into an oven it goes to braise. Ooh. <laughs> We're gonna take this off. All right, into the oven it goes. That is a, uh, uh, let's say a 375 degree oven. And it's gonna go in there Sit there, all it has got to do is sit there for about 30 minutes. So, after about 30 minutes, the chicken should be cooked through, your vegetables softened, and your skin, whew, nice and crispy, which is where we're at. Um, the one thing, you know, I forgot to add into here, which I normally do, you don't have to, but I, I usually do, is a couple tablespoons of sugar. Um, so it has that kind of, you know, the, there's the sour element from the pickled peppers. And if you don't have pickled peppers, by the way, you can use like, um, instead of the pickled peppers juice, you can leave out the pickled peppers and just use regular bell peppers. And instead of the pickled pepper juice, um, you can just add a couple tablespoons of vinegar. Um, but the uh, sourness from the pickled peppers, you want to add a little bit of sugar to balance that out. So you got this kind of sweet and salt, sweet and sour thing going. All right. 
and we're ready to serve. So this one is a brothy dish. Um, you know, if you, if you have boiled potatoes or some kind of pasta or rice, that goes really well with this um, because there's a lot of this sort of brothiness that you want to kind of have something to soak up with. Let's get a couple pieces of chicken. Chicken and a couple pieces of sausage. I'm just going to leave that thyme in there and tell everyone who's eating it, which is me and my wife and my daughter, to uh, pick out the thyme and not, not eat the stalks, which is sort of a self-explanatory thing, I think. You gotta... Let's go with this guy. All right. Let's get those vegetables all around and some of that broth. This is one of those dishes that they serve. Um, so I, I, I grew up in um, Morningside Heights and lived in Morningside Heights in Harlem um, for a long time. Um, and uh, there's a very famous Italian restaurant called Rayo's um, in Harlem. You can get the uh, you can get the Ray, Rayo's jarred um, jarred pasta sauces um, at the supermarket. It is by far the best jarred pasta sauce. Also, like one of the most expensive, but by far the best. Um, but chicken scarpariello is like the kind of Italian American dish that they would serve there. Not that I ever went because it's one of those places where you need like a, I think you need some kind of membership to get in. It's one of those places. Anyhow, oops, lost my spoon. All right. Shall we taste this? Shall we taste it? I say we shall. Let me, uh... um, by the way, that, that better than bouillon stuff is pretty salty, so I, I, I didn't add any excess salt to it. Um, but if I was using homemade chicken stock or a, um, or a low sodium store bought stock, then I would, uh, I would probably add a little bit of extra salt to make sure that it's seasoned properly. Mmm. It is delicious. Whoops. Sorry, I'm trying to get the little bit, little bit for the dogs here. All right, guys. Shabu, sit. Shabu, sit. Good girl. And here you go, Hamon. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna call my family to dinner. And um, guys, gals, and non-binary pals, I will see you next time, bye.